as long as this pandemic's in the driver's seat and it's likely to stay there for weeks or even months. We need to keep an eye on the companies that are trying to beat the darn thing. Take Regeneron Pharmaceuticals. It's a phenomenally successful biotech. It's our first guest on the show back when its stock was trading at less than five bucks. It's now almost 500. For now, what matters is that Regeneron's got a monoclonal antibody drug for arthritis called Kevzara that they developed with Santa Fe. Yesterday morning, we learned that they're studying this thing as a treatment for patients with severe cases of COVID-19. This isn't a cure, but it treats the deadliest symptom, your body's overactive inflammatory immune response. That's the bad pneumonia. Then just this morning, Regeneron announced something new, a promising antibody cocktail that can be administered as a prophylactic before you're exposed to the coronavirus as a treatment for those already infected. Management hopes to be producing hundreds of thousands of these by the end of the summer. It's, it's, it's huge if it works. Will it work? Let's check in with Dr. George Yankopoulos, Regeneron's co-founder, chief scientific officer, and the, by the way, the man who I think conquered Ebola. Get a better sense of where, of where this company's going. Dr. Yankopoulos, welcome to Mad Money. Hey, Jim. It's great to uh, finally be on, but like you said, it's really special for us, and we really got to thank you, because way back about 15 years ago, when our stock was about five bucks per share, you had my buddy Len Schleifer on here, um, and hopefully your listeners took advantage of your insight. Uh, it certainly made a difference to us back then, because back then we really depended on the capital markets for funding, and you gave us a boost. Well, so you thanks deserved again. It. Thanks again. You made it happen. Well, I, you deserved it. You and Len have been straight shooters. And, and, and Doc, I got to tell you something. I went to Len immediately when this became an issue, and he told me not to get my hopes up. This is going to be a little while. Don't get too excited. He feels now, Doc, that that is no longer the case, and he actually says, listen, enthusiasm is warranted. Can you tell us why? Well, I think that we all still have to be cautious. It's just that there's a lot of things that are now going on, and not only at Regeneron, but throughout the industry. And I think this is a great time for our industry because I think a lot of us can be stepping forward and really showing that we have what it takes to really help make a difference. I mean, I think that we've been doing it as an industry, you know, behind the scenes for so many diseases, but this is a chance out in the open for everybody to see it. But in particular for us um, and what we're doing here, we are pretty excited that there's a real chance we can make a difference. I mean, you already referred, you made a lot of the big points already, but just, just to make it easy for your listeners, there's really... Four things that we could be doing to try to hopefully survive or make a dent with this uh, pandemic. One is, of course, what they call containment. Try to do all these things that we're doing, try to social distance, try to limit contact so the disease doesn't spread, so that the hospitals don't become full all at once. Just to slow it down so the healthcare system can deal with it, and also to wait to see whether we can have some new treatments that can make a, make a difference. And in terms of treatments, there's really three approaches. The first approach, try old medicines that have worked for other reasons and other things. Just try everything under the kitchen sink. That's, that's the first approach because those things are approved. They're here and now. And we have one very exciting development in that that you've already mentioned that I can get back to. Okay. The last approach, the final approach, is the vaccine approach. And just so everybody understands, what is a vaccine? You give a killed or attenuated version of the virus to a person, the person mounts what they call an immune response, which is really what they call antibodies that mm -hmm. fight against the vaccine and that provides protection against the virus itself. But as you've heard from Tony Fauci, the head of uh, the NIAID, um, he says, you know, those things take a long time. It's gonna be one to two years, right. probably, unless we get really lucky to get a vaccine. So we, occupy the spot right in the middle. So between everything that's already out there, trying that, where we have something there, the vaccine approach, which is a year or two away uh, uh, from, from coming, we can actually mimic what the body does um, with the vaccine. We can mimic it in a mouse, believe it or not, because we have these genetically humanized mice that are precise mirrors of the human immune system. We literally can give those viruses uh, to those mice, they mount a fully human response, just like humans would do to the best of all vaccines. But, we can but literally that, even under best of circumstances, that still we're going to go through a, a, at least a, a, a year, if not 18 months, sir. Right. Well, no, for the vaccine, you're going to have to wait one to two years. But how about but the one the, that we can go right now that'll make it so our lungs aren't destroyed by this? Right. No, no. But hold on. Our second approach, before okay. we get back to the lung, which is immediate and it's here and now, we're already clinically testing it. Right. 
we can do the equivalent of what the vaccine does by using these magic mice. And we're already, we already announced, that was our big announcement yesterday, right. that we have essentially the equivalent of what the body responds with the vaccine. We can actually be treating patients with that uh, to test to see if it works uh, by the beginning of the summer. That's incredible. Uh, so that, that really could provide protection for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, healthcare workers, people on the front lines, people who are at the highest risk, let's say, kids with cystic fibrosis or lung diseases, elderly patients. So that's something that can beat those timelines of a, a year or two by a year or two. That's so incredible. That's I mean, so Len did not feel that way. Sir, Len did not feel that way uh, six weeks ago. What changed? Okay, well, of course, this is biology. And uh, biology, it's not like doing coding and writing an app where things are a lot more predictable. Um, things can go wrong because you're dependent on, you know, things that you don't really understand. But we've been hitting all our timelines, exceeding all our right. timelines. We really have, you know, it all depends on individuals and genius. Uh, we have a, a, a super um, scientist who is a genius, a guy named Christos Kiratsus, who's been uh, leading this effort. He's the one who led the effort for Ebola. Right, and, he's, and succeeded. He and his team, they've been beating all the timelines. And so we've been able to move up our timeline because they're really delivering. And so we went from thinking it was going to be quite a while away to the point that we really believe that by the beginning of the summer, we could be testing that approach in patients. And mean to, in the meantime, a drug that has been approved for another, another use, how is that going? Because that's being used right now. And I need to, I don't want to create false hope, but boy, do we ever need some hope here, sir. Yeah, no. So, so that's the other thing. In terms of throwing everything under the kitchen sink at this, they really did this in China. That's where it all started. OK, they were, you know, they were hoping to to just hope that anything beyond hope, because so many people were right. affected and dying and they tried a lot of things. And the one thing that everybody started getting excited about was something that blocked this this one particular biologic that blocks inflammation. Right. Uh, and, and they reported it and they were very excited. But this was done in an uncontrolled way, uh, not what we would call a randomized control study that we could really trust and believe in. But there was a lot of reason to get excited about. So we partnered with BARDA, okay. uh, the rapid defense part of the, of the government, with the FDA. They really stepped up. With New York State, the governor's office, All right. okay. the health commissioner of New York. And we did something that's never been done in record time. We got a study going so that we initiated in New York State right. this week um, where we're going to already be treating patients with this, hopefully seeing, this replicating... Week. Yes, this week. And we're, we're going to be hopefully seeing within a few weeks whether this really replicates and confirms the positive suggestions that are coming out of China. And if they are, it means for the most seriously ill patients, um, we may have something that keeps them from having to go on ventilators or be able to maybe take them off ventilators. So there's hope, okay. but it has to be proven. And that's why everybody got together. I'm talking about the government, the FDA, right, right. New York New State, because it's New so York State, New York City it. Health, New York State, these guys, are, they're real serious, Doc. You know that. So this is not false hope. Well, no, I think that there's real hope here, because like I said, it depends on, of course, replicating the exciting findings coming out of right. China. If we can do that and we can do it in controlled fashion that satisfies the FDA here, this could, in a very short time, give hope to the most critical people. All right. The next, the next approach about using our, our essentially mouse-manufactured vaccine to give a fully human solution to patients, remember, we did that, and it worked for Ebola exactly. in record time. So we now, especially as you said, we've updated our timeline since you spoke to Len mm -hmm. a while back. We've got an increasing confidence that we can meet it. I mean, things can go wrong, but that is also an exciting approach that within months could be providing a second approach that could be giving hope to patients. So one okay. is the first one, the existing drug being tried in clinical trials right, right, right now, starting right. this week. It could, it could help the most severe patients. The next approach could actually be given to people and prevent them from getting sick. All right, Doc, we're going to have to leave it there. I know I stay in touch with Len. I'll be staying in touch with you. This is way too important. This is everything is on the line. And I thank you so much for coming on Mad Money. That's Dr. George Yankopoulos, Regeneron's co-founder, Chief Scientific Silver, and the man who is known as having conquered Ebola. Mad Money's back after the break. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. 
follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.